Clerk, are we ready? All right. I'd like to call to order the Cuyahoga County Council regular meeting for Tuesday, June the 23rd, 2015. Clerk, please call the roll. Calling the roll, Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Hairston? Mr. Hairston is absent at the moment. Ms. Simon? Here. Mr. Greenspan? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Germana? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Here. Ms. Conwell? Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones is absent this evening. Council President Brady. Here. You have a quorum. Could we have a, a motion to excuse uh, Councilman Jones's absence tonight? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the Councilman <coughs> is, uh, is excused. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under um, uh, the next item, silent meditation, um, um, we've had several councilmen um, uh, indicate uh, the obvious, and that's that uh, we should... Um, Keep in mind the victims uh, uh, of the shooting last week in South Carolina. So. Thank you. Any uh, public comment related to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President. The first speaker is Mr. Puri. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Council Executive Budish, Council President, Vice President, and Council Members. I oppose your resolution for renewing the sin tax on cigarettes to pay for arts and culture. This is my sixth opportunity to comment on fair funding for the arts in Cuyahoga County. While I don't smoke, I love the arts and the role they play in enriching our lives on a daily basis. We need fair funding for the arts where we all pay. This is a social justice issue. County leaders in 2015 continue to champion what Jimmy DeMora championed in 2006, supporting the arts on the backs of cigarette smokers, demonstrating an absence of enlightened leadership. <clears throat> At the meetings of May 12 and May 26, a parade of speakers urged continuation of the sin tax because the arts benefit the community. Well, that the arts benefit the community is indisputable. What is also indisputable is that this benefit results from direct exploitation of the weak and powerless. While an estimated 80,000 Clevelanders enjoyed the 2015 parade in the circle held in University Circle a few days ago, there was no direct acknowledgement that the annual event, an arts extravaganza, was partially supported by the cigarette smokers of Cuyahoga County. And what does Roldo Bottimol, Cleveland's conscience, have to say about the syntax? Quote, this is a class issue, and the upper elite are putting on a classless act. They are going after the little guy again, unquote. I will actively oppose the 2015 syntax with my vote no on syntax signs. Love the arts, but not the use of regressive taxes to support them. We should stop exploiting the weak and powerless in our society. It's a sin, Cuyahoga, to fund the arts just on the backs of smokers. We need fair funding for the arts. Tax all or tax none. The ends should never justify the means. Never. Mr. President, I have one question for our council members pertaining to the issue of social justice. I will appreciate a response 
during your discussion on the subject resolution? Here's the question. Is it fair that in Cuyahoga County, only cigarette smokers should be taxed to support arts and culture, an activity that all of us enjoy and benefit from? I'm submitting a document for the record. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. The next speaker is Gwendolyn Garth. Council President and members, um, I come, uh, come as a member of the um, art group. And uh, my concern, I, I support the uh, submission of the bill wholeheartedly in hopes that it gets passed wholeheartedly. But my concern is um, being ensured that the small organizations get a fair share of the funds. Uh, most of the groups, uh, presidents, and so forth of the groups that I um, collaborate with, that is their concern, that we have not gotten a fair share. So I would like to uh, be able to collaborate and make sure that we somehow or another have more easy on ramps for the smaller organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Joe Roman. Afternoon, County Executive, Council President, other members. Um, thanks for giving us a chance to speak tonight. Um, my name is Joe Roman. I'm the CEO of the Greater Cleveland Partnership, and I'm here today to speak strongly in favor of placing the renewal of the arts and culture levy on the ballot this fall. You know, last week, both the Greater Cleveland Partnership and our small business affiliate, Cozy, uh, endorsed at our various meetings uh, this levy and certainly pledged to work on behalf of it, as we always do. Um, as our area's regional chamber of commerce, our mission is to mobilize leadership, expertise, and resources to produce business growth and conditions that support that. A vibrant arts and cultural sector is absolutely critical to that goal. And what we've learned over the last eight or nine years is that support of our arts through this levy has in fact become a competitive advantage for our region that we need to maintain. You know it yourselves, the direct impact, economic impact of arts and culture on our county is indisputable. In 2013 alone, organizations that were funded by the levy were responsible for just under $343 million in direct expenditures, including nearly $150 million in salaries. But the influence that arts and culture has on our economy extends far beyond just this direct impact. Cleveland has an incredible amount of momentum right now. We all know that. Thanks in no small part to the vibrancy of our arts community. Cleveland's art and cultural organizations have earned us a world-class reputation. We see it every day. Every year, our arts and cultural organizations attract millions of visitors who then go home and go online and tell their friends all about what's happening here in Cleveland. One of the top reasons companies cite for locating and even more importantly expanding in this region is the arts and cultural opportunities we all provide. And research tells us that arts and, cu and cultural opportunities make an area more attractive to in-demand employees, especially young professionals in high-tech fields. It's absolutely essential that we sustain this levy and the competitive advantage it's given us. The arts and cultural levy has succeeded beyond our expectations, and every community in Cuyahoga County is benefiting from it. I want to add just a little other perspective. Um, I have a board of 70-plus people, some of the most active business leaders in our community. And almost every one of them to a person is on the board of some small or large cultural institution in this town. So they know directly, as part of the governance of those organizations, how critical this levy really has been to them, both large and small. I ask that you please give our voters the opportunity to renew this commitment, and we certainly will pledge our organization's help in making sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Paul Dolan.
County Executive Budish, uh, Council President Brady, uh, members of council, uh, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Uh, my name is Paul Dolan. I, I am the CEO of the uh, Cleveland Indians. Uh, that is my day and evening job, at least today. Um, but I wear other hats. Um, as a volunteer, I am chair of the board of directors of the Great Lakes Science Center, and I am co-chair of the Arts and Culture Action Committee. And most important of all, uh, I am a parent. And through each of these roles, I've learned how valuable arts and culture are in Cleveland and Cuyahoga County. The Indians, for over a century, have played our home games in downtown exclusively for the last 68 years. We have a long institutional memory. We've learned over the years how arts, culture, and sports complement one another and contribute to the growth and quality of life in our entire county. And I've seen firsthand how important arts and culture have been to growing and sustaining the neighborhood surrounding Progressive Field, the neighborhood that we share with you. The Great Lakes Science Center may be a young institution, certainly in this city of legacy institutions, but with the support of investments that were funded through the arts and culture levy, the Science Center is able to create educational opportunities for tens of thousands of young Cuyahoga County residents each year and add energy and vitality to our community. Finally, like thousands and thousands of other parents, I've had the opportunity to introduce my children to many of the rich arts and cultural opportunities this county has to offer. Those experiences are irreplaceable, and we will carry them with, through the rest of our lives. I supported the arts and cultural levy when it was proposed almost a decade ago because it was a way to ensure our county's arts and cultural legacy. The levy has succeeded beyond anyone's expectations, and what had started as insurance for our arts and culture community has turned into an investment that has paid huge dividends. I'm happy and proud to serve as co-chair of the campaign to pass this renewal because of the commitment that our county's arts and cultural advocates demonstrate every day. To them, enriching the quality of life in all of our communities is a, isn't just a job, it's a passion and calling. So I'm here to make only a simple request that County Council vote to place the issue of renewing Cuyahoga County's arts and cultural levy on the 2015 general election ballot. Please give Cuyahoga County voters the opportunity to continue investing in our arts and culture sector without raising taxes and receiving all the benefits that come from it. Thank you for providing this, me this opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you. Cleveland Council President Kevin Kelly. Uh, Mr. President, members of council, uh, county executive, thank you for taking a couple minutes to listen to me today. Um, I am here to speak on the arts and culture levy. And I would start by asking a pretty basic question, which is um, in 2006, the voters that we all represent voted for this levy. So let's start with a question. Did they get a return on that investment? Did this community get a return on the investment that the voters said, yes, we want to make this investment in our arts and culture institutions? Um, I would suggest that it has been a tremendous investment and it's been a tremendously wise choice by the voters of Cuyahoga County. And I'm going to ask you to let them make that decision again. Um, we've, you, you hear about the, the, the larger institutions that were supported, the uh, Museum of Art, the Cleveland Orchestra, and that is good. There is, no, there is nothing wrong with supporting our best in world institutions. But if you, look at the, if you look at the heat map of those programs that have been funded, they're large and they're small, and they've touched every community in Cleveland and in Cuyahoga County. Uh, just in my neighborhood, the Art House, for example, is a tremendous example of a, of a small institution that teaches children the, you know, the value of art and really, really starts at a young age to, um, to really instill what an important part of our social fabric art is. Um, there is a mural painted on State Road, a, a beautiful mural painted on the German Club. Um, and I only, these are just a couple examples that are very local, just to make the point that 
But it is. It's the large institutions. It's also the small institutions. You look at the heat map, every single community in this county has been touched. The voters spoke in 2006. The accountability attached to the levy and the expenditures, I think, has been fantastic. And I think it does show that, yes, the right decision was made in 2006. I respectfully ask you to place this on the ballot so that the voters can, can make that decision for themselves of whether they want this to continue to keep giving to the county. And really, to not renew it would be to kind of take this away at this point, to, to go back to where we were. And what is the social value that would be gained? Um, the way I say it, the only gain would be that, if you call it a gain, is that a pack of cigarettes would be cheaper. And I don't know if that outweighs all the good that this levy has done for this community since 2006. Thank you for your time, and uh, please consider placing this on the ballot. Thank you. The next speaker is Natalie Ronane. Good afternoon, Council President Brady and the members of County Council and County Executive Budish. It's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. I went to the Justice Center, so this is much nicer over here. Um, I am Natalie Ronane. I'm the Executive Vice President of Cleveland Botanical Garden in University Circle. And uh, I'm here on behalf of our board and our staff. Uh, and we're delighted to be here to speak in favor of placing the arts and culture levy for renewal on the ballot this fall. Um, the garden is uh, both a legacy that's been entrusted to us by our founders, um, but we are also an asset for improving the lives of our current and our future generations. Uh, the arts and culture levy has been a vital piece of what has brought the garden to its, um, its, its current state today and where we'll go in the future. Um, through the grants funded through the arts and culture uh, levy, the Cleveland Botanical Garden grew to over 212,000 visitors last year, and we served over 13,000 school kids. Um, those numbers are important, but I want to give you a little bit of meaning behind those numbers, because I'm sure a lot of museums and arts and culture institutions give you the same. But get, just put it in a story context for you. Uh, that means that third graders, 13,000 of them, come to the Botanical Garden and they have a living laboratory where they can explore and learn about science and grow their horizons in the, in the Eleanor Armstrong Smith Glass House that we have, our 10 acres of outdoor gardens, and our learning farms across the, the county. It also means that our Green Corps students, ages 14 to 18 year olds, uh, do get the privilege of serving their community by growing uh, organic produce in our former vacant lots, and they're earning a minimum wage, they're earning college credit, and they're becoming a vital piece of our sustainable future in our city. It also means that we are contributing to the research going on into how we restore vacant land to make our community healthier and more vibrant. And all of these programs that the Botanical Garden is pleased to provide our neighborhoods is through, truly, uh, the benefit of the arts and culture revenue that this levy provides. So um, it couldn't be more vital to organizations like mine, the Botanical Garden, and many of my peers across the Oval and across the city. So thank you for listening, and uh, we hope that you'll consider this resolution for support. Thank you. Thank you. The final speaker in, on a different subject regarding an award for resurfacing Bennett Road in North Royalton is Council, uh, North Royalton Council Member Paul Marnicek. Good afternoon, County Executive and members of County Council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. As you heard, um, my name is Paul Marnicek. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilman in North Royalton and I chair the City Streets Committee. And as you heard, I'm here uh, asking for your support of Resolution 2015-110. Um, wasn't too long ago we were dealing with the winter, and in my city we're still dealing with the consequences of a tough winter. Uh, this year alone, we're gonna spend over a million dollars on infrastructure repairs in North Royalton, including our matching portion, about $294,000 of this award. Um, this is a very important section of North Royalton. If you haven't had a chance, please come out, take a look. We've got some great new restaurants while you're in town. If you want to get something to eat, um, that wouldn't be a problem either. 
Um, we only have a short window of time to do these repairs. This is a pretty extensive repair. We only have a short window of time to get these done um, before the season closes. So hopefully um, you will approve this tonight and we'll be able to continue to make repairs. As I said, we're given over a million dollars this year alone to try and repair some needed infrastructure in North Royalton, and this would be a critical piece of that. So thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it, Mr. Okay. President. And, um, <clears throat> item number six, I'd like to have a motion to approve the minutes of uh, the June 9th Committee of the Whole and the June 9th regular meeting. Second. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Uh, the council president has no announcements. Do we have a message from the county executive this evening? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, two items. Uh, first, we've um, heard about the importance, importance of arts and culture tonight, which I certainly agree with. Uh, recreation is also important, and so I'm pleased to say that our county public works department has been awarded a $700,000 grant from the Ohio Department of Public Works to help with the Towpath Trail Extension Project. Uh, the grant will fund stage three of this project and complete the final six miles of the 101 mile trail that links Cleveland to New Philadelphia. Uh, and the second item, uh, Harvest for Hunger campaign closed last week. Our county employees raised $36,514 plus additional pledges through payroll deductions of $4,500 which together constitute a 64% increase over last year. Uh, these funds that our employees raised will provide more than 160,000 nutritious meals. Uh, so I wanna thank all of our county employees who donated, baked, or bowled for Harvest for Hunger this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number nine, legislation introduced to council, consideration of resolutions of council for first reading and referral to the committee. Resolution number 2015-0115, a resolution approving the appointment of C. Ellen Conley to serve on the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument Board of Trustees for an unexpired term ending April 15, 2019, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Additionally, Council Member Miller would like to be a sponsor on this legislation. And please add uh, me as a, myself as a sponsor as well. Um, Okay, um, that will be referred to the Human Resources Committee. Resolution number 2015-0116, a resolution providing for the submission to the electors of the County of Cuyahoga, an amendment to Article 11, Section 11.01 .01 of the Charter of Cuyahoga County to ensure the independence of the auditing function by providing that the County Audit Committee consist of the President of Council and four residents of the county with expertise in the field of auditing who are to be appointed by the County Executive and confirmed by Council and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Well, you know, as they say, if you don't succeed the first time, try again. Um, this will be referred to the Council Operations Committee. Uh, consideration of a resolution of Council for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2015-0076, a resolution determining to submit to the electors the question of renewing the excise tax on the sale of cigarettes for the purpose of funding arts and cultural facilities and programs in the county and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Second. And seconded. Um, I think that uh, this is probably the most important um, uh, vote that this council has taken, certainly one of the most important votes this council has taken this year. Uh, and uh, it's really humbling to realize that if the levy passes uh, by uh, our willingness to put it on the ballot, that um, uh, for many years to come, uh, the quality of life uh, in this community in many ways will be improved and enhanced. And so we are very proud to be part of this. I know other councilmen may have comments they want to make before we have a final vote. Councilman Germain has signaled to me. Thank you, Council President. Uh, and I appreciate all the comments from uh, all the members of the community. I mean, it's definitely 
a no-brainer that arts and culture brings quality of life to all our residents. Uh, so I, I'm certainly going to be voting for this. But there's a part of me that's, that's sad that it's saying that this is imperfect. Uh, and I hope we can improve this. I'll, I'll be the first one to support repealing this if we could find a better solution for taxing. Um, I want to support the arts, but I'm not going to take up smoking. Uh, that's number one. Number two, as uh, Representative Schran brought, brought up when we were having our discussion, it's going in the wrong direction. And with the state possibly putting uh, more taxes on cigarettes, if this is so important to the quality of life, why can't we find a, a, a different mechanism for funding it? So I'm supporting this, but I'm disappointed that we don't have a better idea so that uh, people really have a choice. Do we want quality of life? Really, what this is coming down to is the non-smokers are voting uh, for this quality of life item, and I think it should be everyone. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Schron. Yes, uh, and as someone who, who has long spoken on behalf of the arts, and uh, uh, I am going to be voting in favor of this, uh, but I agree with my colleague that uh, this is not a perfect solution, but if you look through taxes uh, that uh, I know our colleagues uh, from the city of Cleveland have have come to a crossroads at times and other council members from other districts uh, that taxes are never uh, always the perfect solution as far as when you look at them, you do your best job when you make when you sit up here as one of the 11 and try to make your best call. Uh, and so, uh, though it's not perfect, uh, I am concerned with the funding source uh, as it goes forward because long term wise, uh, the funding source is not uh, sustainable, as we saw in the projections, that uh, it will drop in today's dollars, not in inflationary dollars, but in today's actual dollars by almost 50% by the end of, of this. Uh, so organizations really need to look inside themselves and say, okay, what is it? How are we going to do it? What are we going to do better? How can we construct this? And we'd be encouraged to work with the city uh, to actually look at the, whatever that tool would be, uh, because... That doesn't even include the impact of inflation. Uh, you add inflation in that same 10-year cycle, and it's not just a 50%. It's actually a greater uh, loss. So uh, my heart goes out to those folks who have to make the tough calls when uh, the dollars aren't going to be there in that, in that respect. But I, uh, I agree with my colleague. This is not a perfect solution. Uh, there's a lot of times that we don't have perfect solutions, uh, uh, and as a result, uh, I will be supporting this wholeheartedly and working uh, to, to make sure that it gets passed uh, with the desire that we can find a different, because um, as my colleague said, it's moving in the wrong direction. The funding is moving in the wrong direction, but as somebody who lost uh, uh, somebody to, uh, to cigarettes, I think it's moving in the right direction as far as the concept of where cigarettes are going and society. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we next, I believe, have Councilwoman Conwell. Thank you, President Brazdy. I uh, just wanted to say I've enjoyed learning more about the inner workings of CAC. Uh, from the beginning, I have been a sponsor of, for this legislation because the arts are very important for the youth as well as the county. My questions and concerns at meetings have stemmed from making sure that many residents as possible from Cuyahoga County benefit from this tax levy if successful in November. I hope that in moving forward, some of my suggestions will be addressed uh, with the board. And I want to personally thank Karen Gall's Mills, as well as Stephen Minter for the additional time they took to meet with me. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Harrison, did you have comments? No, no comment, um, Mr. President. Just like my name to be added as a sponsor to this. Thank you. Yeah, Councilwoman Simon. Uh, sure, just briefly, I want to thank everybody for coming out to really give us specifics how this particular levy has really helped grow um, our arts community. The economic impact can't be denied, but I think even more importantly is how the arts really have given a voice to all the diverse sections of our community and our county. It's a way to unify the community in so many different inspiring ways. I think this levy is a win-win. It's already proven to, to be a benefit to discourage smoking, to reduce smoking, to reduce the cost of health care and disease that's associated with smoking. 
and at the same time expand a forum for residents to come and really flourish in, in our in our county. So I'm very, very proud to be supportive of this levy being placed on the ballot. And I, I would submit as well the future and very identity of our county is inextricably linked to this um, to this levy. So um, I I'm really happy to support it and thank everybody for coming out. Thank you, Councilman Councilman Miller. Council President Brady and my colleagues and community, I strongly support placing renewal of the arts and culture levy on the ballot and endorse passage of the issue by Cuyahoga County's voters on November 3rd. Arts and culture plays a vital role in Cuyahoga County, improving our quality of life and our economy. There is no one silver bullet for economic and social success and a thriving arts and culture community certainly equates to a better future. Not only do we have world-class institutions such as the Art Museum, the Cleveland Orchestra, Playhouse Square, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the Great Lakes Science Center, we also have vibrant arts and culture neighborhoods such as University Circle, Tremont, the, Garden, the Gordon Square Arts District, and the Beck Center. They all lift up our community and make us special. The cigarette tax is not unfair. Smoking is among the leading causes of chronic disease, and the public pays a lot of the costs of health care related to chronic disease. Research shows that higher costs of cigarettes reduces consumption, which is better for health, saves money, and is in the public interest. The cigarette tax, however, is a declining source of revenue, and we will need to come up with a new funding model when the next renewal comes up in 10 years. Until that time, this levy provides vitally important bridge financing so that hundreds of arts and culture organizations in our community can continue to serve us well. Our love of art and music and dance and theater and science and nature makes us the special people we are. It is a large part of why we are a world-class city with a modest population. Let's sustain our illustrious trend tradition of outstanding arts and culture and build it to even greater heights in the future. Thank you, Councilman. Anybody else? Hearing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'd like a, um, a roll call vote uh, given the significance of this particular vote. Calling the roll for resolution number 2015-0076. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Hairston? Yes. Ms. Simon? Yes. Mr. Greenspan? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Germana? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Mr. Schron? Yes. Ms. Conwell? Yes. And Council President Brady? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Now we have the campaign to go forward with. Thank you all for coming this evening. Um, next, uh, consideration of ordinances of council for first reading and referral to committee. Ordinance number 2015-0010, an ordinance amending sections 113.01, 301.02, 303.01, 303.04 of the Cuyahoga County Code and enacting section 303.07 of the Cuyahoga County Code to establish procedures by which the Personnel Review Commission adopts its administrative rules and to make various changes to the county's civil service code and declaring the necessity that this ordinance become immediately effective. So we'll go to HR. <clears throat> Consideration of an ordinance of council for third reading adoption. Ordinance number 2015-0009, an ordinance amending chapter 713 of the Cuyahoga County Code to provide for the establishment of various service fees at the Cuyahoga County Animal Shelter and declaring the necessity that this ordinance become immediately effective. Move to adopt. And first and seconded, Councilwoman Simon. Uh, thank you very much, um, Council President. This particular ordinance it gives the animal shelter the ability to be 
competitive for dogs that have to spend days there um, waiting for their owners to come and get them. It's been way below what other um, counties charge. But more importantly, the shelter is going to begin providing other services for dog owners in the county, including microchipping or cremation and other services that the community has asked for and now will be able to provide. And it just gives a fee um, rate for those new services. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The ordinance is adopted. Legislation introduced by the executive consideration of resolutions for first reading adoption under suspension of the rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. The motion has been first and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of suspending the rules say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2015-0117, a resolution amending the 2014-2015 biannual operating budget for 2015 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations from the general fund and other funding sources for appropriation transfers between budget accounts and for cash transfers between budgetary funds in order to meet the budgetary needs of various county departments, offices, and agencies, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Thank you, Mr. President. Do we have a motion to adopt first? Uh, motion to adopt resolution. And a second. Second. Okay, Councilman Greenspan. Great, thank you. Uh, this is our standard biweekly fiscal agenda. Uh, before you are two questions that were submitted uh, to the administration. The answers were uh, sufficient insofar as my opinion is concerned, and I would uh, urge support for the resolution. All right, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0118, a resolution approving a collective bargaining agreement between Cuyahoga County and Fraternal Order of Police, Ohio Labor Council Incorporated, representing approximately 20 employees in the classification of corrections officer sergeant at the Sheriff's Department for the period July 1, 2015 through December 31, 2017, directing that funds necessary to implement the collective bargaining agreement be budgeted and appropriated, authorizing the county executive to execute the agreement and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. i move to adopt. Second. Um, we uh, discussed this, uh, this uh, issue in executive session earlier. Um, all those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Consideration of resolution for first readings and referral to committee. Resolution number 2015-0119, a resolution making awards on requisition number 29884 to various appraisers in the total amount not to exceed $266,000 for real estate appraisal services subject to share of sale for the period August 1, 2015 through July 31, 2017, authorizing the county executive to execute the contracts and all other documents consistent with said awards and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the appraisers is printed on the agenda. Refer this to public safety. Resolution number 2015-0120, a resolution making an award on requisition number 33225 to Chagrin Valley Paving Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $1,779,434 for 2015 Operations Resurfacing Program Group 1, located in various municipalities, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, authorizing the county engineer on behalf of the county executive Executive to make an application for allocation from County Motor Vehicle $7.50 license tax funds in said amount to fund said contract and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the projects and in the municipalities is, uh, is located on the agenda. This will be referred to Public Works. 
Resolution number 2015-0121, a resolution authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1200-421 with El Barrio Incorporated for job readiness, job search, job placement, and job retention services for Ohio Works First cash assistance and food stamp recipients for the period July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015 to extend the time period to December 31, 2015 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $600. $32,429, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Referred to Health and Human Services. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading. Resolution number 2015-0109, a resolution making an award on requisition number 31427 to Michael Baker, Jr. Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $678,383 for design engineering services for replacement of Mastic Road Bridge number 03.13 side hill structure in the city of Fairview Park, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. This item will move to the July 14th Council agenda for consideration for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2015-0114, resolution making an award on requisition number 32092 to Northwoods Consulting Partners Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $573,229 for software and professional services for maintenance and support of the electronic document imaging system for the period September 1, 2015 through August 31, 2016, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. This item will also move to the July 14th meeting for consideration for third reading adoption. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of the rules. Could have a motion to suspend the rules. Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. And made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of suspending the rules, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the <laughs> rules are suspended. Resolution number 2015-0107, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of Gary Seamus to serve on the Cuyahoga County Audit Committee for an unexpired term ending December 31, 2015, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. And moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0108, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment or reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga County Planning Commission for the term January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2017, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the appointments and reappointments as printed on the agenda. Move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, like Mr. Okay. Brady. Go ahead. Uh, each member on the Planning Commission represents a region within this county, and Mayor Enfield, Sellers, and Gordon have expressed their commitment to represent each of their regions. This commitment, uh, this committee asked for confirmation for the appointment of Mayor Sellers and the reappointment of Mayors Enfield and Gordon. We want to thank each of them for their commitment to serve and ask that Council uh, confirm these appointments. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councilman? I would just add that uh, all three mayors uh, expressed their commitment by personally attending the committee meeting, which I thought was impressive. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0110, a resolution making an award on requisition number 33761 to Chagrin Valley Paving Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $1,474,279.95 for resurfacing Bennett Road from Edgerton Road to Bridgewater Drive in the city of North Royalton, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, authorizing the county engineer 
on behalf of the county executive to make an application for allocation from county motor vehicle $7.50 license tax funds in the amount of $1,179,423.96 to fund said contract and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Additionally, Councilmember Gallagher would like to be a sponsor on this legislation. Second Thank you. moved and seconded. Councilman Germana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and thanks to uh, Councilman Marnicek for asking us to support this. But uh, in our public works committee, this was unanim unanimously uh, recommended. And also, it should be noted that uh, we're moving it on second reading suspension because it, uh, we want to move this right along. So uh, the uh, committee recommends passage. Very good. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0111, a resolution adopting the annual tax budget, including the Cuyahoga County Library budget for the year 2016, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. And moved and seconded to discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a, a standard resolution that we adopt uh, to merely set forward the tax budget for the county and the library and committee uh, voted unanimously, and we urge support for this passage. Any other discussion? Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0113, a resolution making an award on requisition number 32388 to Adoption Network Cleveland in the amount not to exceed $749,000 for permanency supportive services for the period April 1, 2015 through March 31, 2017, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Move and seconded. Councilman Jones, the chairman is not here. Councilwoman, Council Vice Chairman, Councilman. Um, yes, Councilman Brady, the Adoption Network provides support and promotes permanency for older youth ages 14 to 18 that are in the permanent custody of DCFS through mentoring services, youth peer support, and child center recruitment. Um, I ask that this council pass this legislation. It was passed fully in uh, committee. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. Consideration of resolutions for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2015-0093, a resolution authorizing the use of a portion of the proceeds of the Cuyahoga County Sales Tax Revenue Bonds Series 2014 County Facilities Improvement in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $14 million for the purposes of paying certain costs of demolition of blighted and nuisance properties and making grants therefore authorizing other actions related to the use of such proceeds and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. So moved. Seconded. Councilman Greenspan. Thank you. Mr. President, if my colleagues will remember, back in, in December of last year, we approved the issuance of bonds, and part of the proceeds of that bond offering were, was to go towards the um, building of the county data center. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, that vote, the state is now offering uh, data center services to which our county has, uh, I can report, executed the agreement. Uh, both the county and the state have executed the agreement. This item was held for third reading in the expectation that the contract would have been executed before we redirected uh, the proceeds, $14 million of the proceeds, which is what this legislation does, to another purpose. The other purpose that the money is being appropriated is to the uh, support the demolition fund to which we've already uh, committed uh, rounds one, uh, round one and the uh, and the uh, land bank three million dollar annual commitment. So this money will go towards that specific purpose. But I wanted to make uh, certain that my colleagues were aware that the contract for the data center has been executed, and the expectation is these monies will not be requested for that use. And so the redirection towards the demolition fund is so requested, and I urge your support. And uh, I'll be supporting it, but it's on the basis that this is not an additional money is to be added to the $50 million. This is included in the $50 million uh, that's, uh, that's been recognized out there. So this is uh, uh, helping to satisfy that the $50 million within that 
So it's not 64 for anybody who might be out there in the reading public. It is uh, part of the $50 million. Thank you. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0103, a resolution authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1300-435 with Child Care Resource Center of Cuyahoga County doing business as starting point for out-of-school time and transition services for the out-of-school time program for the period September 1, 2013 through September 30, 2015 to extend the time period to September 30, 2016 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,400,000, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Consideration of an ordinance for first reading and referral to committee. Ordinance number 2015-0011, an ordinance enacting section 705.03 of the Cuyahoga County Code to establish sewer connection charges for the 2008 Bagley Road Sewer Project, amending county resolution number 052209 dated June 2, 2005, which established the charges payable for connection to the county sanitary sewerage system in county sewer district number 14, and declaring the necessity that this ordinance become immediately effective. This will be referred to Public Works. Item 11, any miscellaneous committee reports? Um, we can start from that end. Go ahead, we'll start from that end. Okay, Public Works will be uh, meeting on July 8th at 10 o'clock. Okay, Councilman Conwell. Um, yes, the Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee will meet Tuesday, July 7th at 10 a.m., to address only the items referred. The health presentation has been postponed due to the interim director is on vacation. Not too many committee meetings next week, uh, considering it's a holiday week, I guess that's understandable. Councilman? Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, the uh, Council Operations and Intergovernmental Committee We'll meet at its regular time slot on Tuesday, June 30th at 3 p.m. And uh, we will hear the amendment to the charter that was just introduced today regarding the composition of the Audit Commission. And I would also like to invite uh, anyone in the council or the administration, if anyone has any other ideas for charter amendments that they would like to have considered for placement on the ballot this November? We would like to have an initial discussion on those, so there will be time for that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Any other miscellaneous business from the Council? Mr. Hearing Chair. none, any public comment unrelated to the uh, agenda? There is none, Mr. Chairman. Was there something further you had, Councilman? Yes, uh, I just uh, would bring to your attention for consideration if, uh, if maybe it's time to get an, another update on the hotel project because it's been a little while. Okay, we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, um, all right. Um, can I have a move to adjourn? So moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. Any nays? This committee is adjourned.